my boy Adachi knows exactly where it's at. <laughs> Upon first sight of Kana, yes, he knows exactly where Best Girl is at. Kana, Best Girl. <laughs> What a fantastic episode. Episode 23 of Danger My Heart. Honestly, this is the first case where I read the manga and I thought, wow, the anime did it really well. Like this episode had a lot of expanding on it, especially the fight between Adachi and Ichikawa. They really expanded on the conversation that was being had there. Now, it sort of gets across the same context here. It just felt like the anime kind of expanded a lot more, really getting into Ichikawa's mindset because... What I think 23 does so well is one is, yes, it's the bros. You know, Adachi and Ichikawa, their friendship, what they really think of each other. And yes, technically Ichikawa proving to Adachi that he is the choice for Yamada. Like letting Adachi kind of give up on Yamada altogether. And yes, again, <laughs> go after Kana. <laughs> but what I kind of think does so well here is it's poetically in my own mind, I kind of feel like this is Ichikawa facing his old self. Because they do kind of bring up, yes, technically last year with the whole sports festival, it was the first time that Ichikawa interacted with Yamada. He touched her. Like, they were interacting with each other. And with this whole year, with this sports festival, it's really him facing his old self. Adachi is Ichikawa's old self. His old self that used to kind of just think that Yamada was this thing to look cute and everything. That's why you like Yamada. Because she's cute. She's hot. That's why you like her. No, Ichikawa's going, no, there's so many more things to this. And it's kind of funny because this is something that Ichikawa's had a conversation about before with Nanjo in the presence of Adachi and kind of expressing that idea that it's, there's so much more to knowing somebody. There's so much more to Yamada and they're not this thing that you can't understand. You just have to try to understand them. And upon understanding them, Ichikawa knows that there's so much more to Yamada that nobody else sees because he took the time to get to know her. Well, technically, let's be honest. You know what? Yamada forced it into his head. <laughs> she forced herself upon him to learn more about her, and he likes it. He likes knowing all this other stuff about her. So, yeah, super good stuff there. But yeah, like so many different kind of additions to the scenes as well that they did with the anime that I was I thought was great. But there's one particular added scene that I was kind of question marking. <laughs> At the very end, where you have a dot she has given up, he's lost. He's walking away. He walks out of the infirmary and Moika walks up and gives him their towel. Now, at first glance, I laughed because I watched the anime, of course, and then I read the manga. At first glance of the anime, I laughed because that's technically Moika, you know, doing a good for Adachi. Like, he, she literally gave him the towel that she, I'm assuming, that she and Yamada were underneath. So it's like, here you go. Here's a towel from two girls. And he doesn't get it. He doesn't realize who gave it to him. And he doesn't realize what it is. So he's like, wow, the, what, who would give me this wet towel? <laughs> and then immediately he gets sidetracked because Kana's there. Which, yes, in the manga, he does see Kana and then immediately goes doki doki. And then she says, gaki. <laughs> and he goes, oh my gosh. Uh, he likes her. So it technically wasn't intended and doesn't necessarily do anything, but it does technically give a little bit more to Moika. Now, yeah, again, the manga and the anime, nothing changes for Dachi. He is defeated, he walks out, he sees Kana, gets Doki Doki. In the anime, it technically adds additional elements to Moika because Moika gives him the towel, kind of stands there a little bit like, uh, I don't know, it looks a little flirtatious. Like it looks like she's doing something that she's kind of like, I kind of like this guy. It gives a little more context to her possibly liking Adachi. So, I don't know. I'm drawing conclusions here. I don't know any further in the manga itself, but I'm sort of wondering if the anime is sort of, I guess, putting more context to possibly Moika liking Adachi. That's all I can kind of draw a conclusion there. We'll see, though. We'll see. Moika could eventually not, but it has been sort of setting it up. It has sort of been setting up that Moika could have a thing for Adachi. But we'll see. It, it, it's still kind of cute in that regard. Again, just like I said before with the whole white day thing, if Moika likes it, I'm all for it. I'm gonna root for a, I'm gonna root for Moika. And plus, I've I've grown to like Adachi. I'm kind of like Ichikawa on the idea that over time, Adachi's kind of become a bro. He's kind of a cool dude, and I, I think this episode more so than ever has kind of cemented that in my mind. He's a cool guy. Yes, he's a kid. He's gonna have those pervy thoughts. He's gonna he's gonna push himself more than he probably should. But at least he acknowledges the boundaries. He acknowledges that he lost to Ichikawa, and that Ichikawa is the better choice. That, yeah, he kind of, like he mentions in this episode, like, I'm glad that I got to know you more because now I understand more. Like, he, 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 in learning more about Ichikawa, realized just how unfit he was for Yamada. And in an extension, 
acknowledges that if he didn't know how good of a person Ichikawa was, he'd probably go to hate Yamada. Again, so it's so doing well in kind of paralleling Adachi to Ichikawa in the idea of not fully understanding Yamada and essentially all being driven by the idea of her looks rather than it being more so about who she is. But let's get into the episode proper, opening it up with the introduction of the sports festival. I love that the teachers is going crazy and Moika's like, yeah, um, you're, you're, you're kind of counting down. It's kind of a little bit weird. And she's like, that's what she did for White Day. <laughs> Yoshida has to point out, yes, you did that for White Day. So don't 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 act like you're high and mighty there. Um, but yeah, getting quickly transitioning into somebody trying to invite Ichikawa. This guy that looks pretty rough wants to invite Ichikawa to be the knight. And I like how he's calling him puny and Yamada speaks up for him. She's all sitting there defending him. Get the We get the um, the cute fern puffy face thing going on. But yes, it cuts over to Adachi. Where we find out that, again, the whole thing with the previous uh, school festival, the, the sports festival. And the idea that, you know, Adachi's pointing out the first time that they had the festival last year, he got hurt. And this is where we finally find out, yes, the first time which Ichikawa first interacted with Yamada. is this, this centipede thing they do. And during that time, at some point, they fell over and Ichikawa went out of his way to protect Yamada. Now, I will argue with the manga, it sort of implies that Ichikawa messed up. And the idea that typically with the centipede, you're supposed to put your hands upon somebody's shoulders. The person, when you're behind somebody, you put your hand on their shoulders and your legs are tied together. So you're walking together and you're kind of supporting each other. You're giving each other balance. But when they actually went to the festival itself... Ichikawa wasn't holding on to her. Now, yes, he can't reach her shoulders, but it implied that he was grabbing the back of her shirt. But when they actually did the festival, he wasn't comfortable enough in front of everybody to do that. So he didn't touch her. And you could say that that's possibly why she fell over. Either way, <laughs> she still falls over, and he, in his own mind, recalls what Hara said, we can't let Yamada get hurt. And so instinctively, he jumps up to protect her. In the anime, he kind of softens her blow. In the manga, he just kind of grabs her and throws her to the side so that she falls on her butt. Rather than falling on her face and her hands, she falls on her butt. And that's enough to kind of protect her. Either way, it kind of does the same thing there. But again, really cool here is Adachi is apologizing because at the time, he blamed Ichikawa for pushing her over. And he said, Yamada came to your defense. And she was so cool when she did it. She was saying, no, he didn't. He was trying to help me. He was protecting me. And that's why he finally, a year later, <laughs> decides to apologize to Ichikawa. I think there's this kind of sense of Adachi sort of, I guess, never apologizing. One, because he maybe, maybe never had a chance to. Or he forgot about it. Or additionally, it could just be an aspect that he's sort of, in his eyes, Ichikawa has changed. And he sort of, again, has become his friend. And wants to apologize for that. That was a wrong that he did. Um, but yeah, that that aside, he just walks away. <laughs> Yamada was so cool that day. And that's the moment that I... Wait, where'd you, where'd you go? Ichika was gone. It also seems like Yamada is remembering that whole year again. And decides to apologize to Ichikawa as well. Noting that he still still has the wounds even to the day. Uh, apologized to him. Was really sweet there. I like how when he's remembering the whole scene. <laughs> how much he at the time was going, this must be the reject group. God, I'm such an idiot. I was such an idiot back then. <laughs> He's recalling his old self and hating himself. Um, it was it was super cute. But yeah, that's when uh, Adachi finally, it clicks for him that, yeah, in fact, Ichikawa and Yamada are a thing. And yeah, he decides to, as he kind of notes later on, he decides at this point that he's going to crash and burn and die, like basically fall in shame. Like he wants to face off against Ichikawa so that Ichikawa can beat him. He knows at this point that he's already lost. They're, they're a thing. I'm never going to be able to get Yamada at this point. But he still wants to compete against Ichikawa because he wants to lose. He wants to have this competition so that he can go down in the glory. <laughs> and that's in reverse, Ichikawa is accepting it because, one, he sees Adachi as a friend. But it seems like, again, later on, it's sort of pointing it in the, the realm of, I don't want to lose. I want to prove that I won't lose. So he accepts it. And so they got the training montage. <laughs> <laughs> going to meet Yamada in the middle of nowhere, going off to her place, doing some some ab exercises, some interesting camera angles. <laughs> that was, again, nothing in the manga that showed that, just some interesting camera angles. Uh, it was very weird. I, I, I had both the same confusion in the anime as the manga, but it was kind of a goofy little segment there and having him sort of pushing himself, why he accepted to, to face off against Sadachi, because he's a friend, but no, because he does like Yamada and he wants to prove that. 
And it kind of goes in this whole thing of like, what kind of eggs do you want? Sweet ones or not? And he's like, I like the sweet ones a lot. I like, <laughs> I like Yamada. It was kind of a cheesy moment. It was, it was a bit cheesy for me, but yeah. That's when we get to the Skull Festival. Uh, Ichikawa gets written on his forehead, Kyo, which I thought was interesting. I don't remember if that's a thing in Japan for the sports festival. If it's something that you can have, like, a, uh, somebody that likes you possibly draw their your name on their forehead. I thought that she put Anna on, on his forehead. But no, she wrote Kyo, which is his name. So I thought that was a little bit weird. So maybe I'm missing a context there. Maybe that's a something that people that like each other do. Um, and maybe just friends will do other things as well, like having wrote on her forehead the whole thing with the noodles. But um, yeah, it goes to the festival itself. And Kong Kong decides to fake her note and looks for a couple, tries to push on Yamada that before she goes and finds Yamada's parents. <laughs> Yuki carrying <laughs> her mom in the princess style and her saying, Yuki, put me down. <laughs> that was super cute. That was way super cute. Yamada getting stuck in the net and Adachi having to gaze at her and Ichikawa has to defend her and block his view. And then, yes, eventually it starts raining and Ichikawa, well, Adachi first decides to push them to continue the match. And then Ichikawa decides to speak up. And this is kind of an, an interesting thing that kind of goes through the previous episode as well, this idea that I think if Adachi himself went to there and said, hey, teachers, continue the whole match, I don't think they would have done it. I think it's just like, you don't have to worry. We're, we're not girls, so you don't have to worry about see-through shirts. And like, that's not the problem. Not, that's not what we're worried about. But no, I think that if Ichikawa didn't step up, I think they would have canceled it. But I think because Ichikawa went up there, they chose to do it. Because again, this goes back to what we've had in the previous episode, that these teachers are acknowledging that Ichikawa himself has changed. That's why they're putting them in the same class again is because they want Ichikawa to get brave. And now he's walking up and he's speaking out that I want to continue this. I want to do a sports festival. Of anything, of any person in that class saying that they want to do the sports festival, having Ichikawa say that means something. <laughs> so like, okay, let's go through with it. If it's Ichikawa, let's do it. Um, but yeah, they have their face off. And like I said, this was a... Super good scene because, again, there's a side of me that kind of believes this is Ichikawa facing himself. Adachi is me, my elder self. And it's really him kind of ramming into Adachi's head while, again, signifying, slamming it into his own head, the idea that there is so much about Yamada that I like. And it's not just her looks. I've I've grown to know her more. I, I see so many greater things about her. And that's why I like her. I don't like her because she's hot. I, I don't like her because she's cute. I don't like her for her looks, even though that's a bonus. <laughs> it's all these other things. It's she's grown up. She's incredible. She's fulfilling her dreams. She's following her dreams. She's she's working harder than anyone else. That's what's so great about her. You can't claim that you like her if all you like about her is that she's cute. <laughs> that's not what liking someone's about. Mm, good boy. <laughs> good boy. Um, that was a that was a massive W for Ichikawa. I love that whole thing. And again. On the opposite end, it's Adachi literally wanting to lose. He came there knowing that Ichikawa already won and that he was he'd already lost. But it's almost like he's trying to find that gloriful moment where he'll fall. He wants to have that big lose. He wants to. It's sort of I, I want to let go. Beat me so that I let go. Um, it, it seems like a, what it is, and it's funny because in the in the return, it's kind of that whole thing where it, it flips on itself in the idea that even though Adachi's giving up and he's telling Ichikawa, yeah, I know that I lost. I already know that I lost. Ichikawa doesn't want him to give up. <laughs> that was the weird thing. It's like it turns it into what I gather from this is it's Ichikawa. Yes, it's, it's Ichikawa speaking out. He wants to yell that I like Yamada. He wants to scream it out loud. And I thought this was going to be the big the big confession moment that everybody in the entire school finds out they're going out um, or at least that he likes her. But it kind of almost feels like it's Ichikawa trying to push Adachi not to give up. If Ichikawa is facing his old self, his old self that liked her because she was just hot, and he learned more things about her, and he's trying to drill that into his own head, you can also say that him telling Adachi not to give up, to fight me, no, I've already lost. No, what are you doing? Get up. Fight me. Don't accept that. Push back. It's like he's telling Adachi to, to compete with him. No, you've already lost. And yes, I won Yamada. That's what Ichikawa was saying. But he's still saying, Adachi, fight me for her. And I think if it's the case where Adachi is his old self, he's trying to essentially encourage Adachi not to give up. If, if Adachi is him and that's his friend now, he knows just as well as Adachi where, what path he's going down. And he's being weak. And he's trying to encourage Adachi 
to get better, to fight back. Don't be my old self. Don't give up. Just because you see that somebody, just because you don't think that you're worthy of it, don't give up. Because I did that once and I failed. I kept downing on myself. I kept saying that I wasn't good enough. So don't say you're not good enough. You're not going to get her though. <laughs> I like, it's like, you're not going to get her, but don't give up. Don't give up like I did. It is kind of, it is, it's kind of interesting in that regard. I actually really like that. It, again, if I'm, if I'm drawing the conclusions properly there, it, it feels like that's kind of what it was going for there. But yeah, then Adachi says, if I didn't know you, I could have probably hated her. <laughs> it's like, he doesn't like this. It's like, I, I, I hate that I like you and that you're a cool dude because now I can't hate her. <laughs> now I can't give up on her or whatever kind of thing. So it was super cute. I, I really liked it. But yeah, the afterwards, I like <laughs> <laughs> they immediately cut over and Adachi's mom's there. This hot Gyaru is there taking care of Ichikawa. And of course, everybody has to walk in. In the manga, both Kana and Yamada walk in at the same time and see it. Um, but of course, in the anime, it's just it's just Yamada walking in and she's super mad about it. Pouty face, who's this hot Gyaru? <laughs> now she knows who that is. It's still, still going to have a jealousy there. Uh, but yes, Adachi gets up, goes to leave. Again, in the manga, as Adachi's leaving. That's when Kana comes in. He gets a little hot seat and then he goes and leaves. But in the, in the, like I said, in the anime, they're adding a little extra scene where as he's leaving, that's when Moika comes up. And I think this is one of those aspects where I kind of think that Moika is showing sort of a like for Adachi in adding this scene and the idea that she is trying to console him. Well, here's a towel, even though it's wet. <laughs> I, I think that if he knew who was under it, he would probably be very excited. But it is kind of, again, from the side of Moika, it's showing that she has some sort of care for him. I just, I have a lot of feeling from her throwing that over his head and then immediately putting her hands behind her back. It's a very cute kind of pose. It does feel like she's kind of has some sort of respect for him at that point, which I can see her in watching Adachi do a cool thing like that in the middle of the sports festival. It was kind of cool. So I can see her kind of getting a little doki doki for him. And again, it's already been implied with the whole white day thing that she is sort of becoming interested in Adachi. And again, like I said, if that's what she wants, <laughs> I'll ship it. I'll totally ship it. But yes, again, he takes the shell off and then Kana shows up and he gets all doki doki. And she turns and says, kids, gacky. <laughs> Just leaves him. And he likes it. He likes it. Uh, yeah, Kana, Kana was, look, was looking really good in this episode. She goes in there and, of course, hears and then decides to leave. But yeah, then we'll get a little brief scene of Ichikawa and Yamada. Now, this is interesting because she immediately points out, okay, yeah, you must be disappointed. Because, yeah, he failed. Uh, he didn't win. He lost. But she's sort of pointing out something that her mother sort of instilled upon her, this idea that it's important to never forget those disappointments because it's the most important thing about moving on. And it seems like he immediately thinks about what I think is like an entrance exam, that his scoring was really low. In the manga, it shows that he got this like 1501 uh, score, which shows that he was really low. And I think they mentioned something that effect in the first season, that he used to be really smart, then at some point something happened. And he was very disappointed in it. And he's pointing out here that it is something that he's always been hiding from. These, these memories of this really bad point in his life. So a disappointment that he forgot about. When he should have remembered it, that way it can help him move forward. That he, it's learning from your mistakes, basically, I think is really what it's going for there. But still, it was still cute because she brings him up to tubs and tubs of food. <laughs> like four massive tubs of food. And he actually likes it. He's like, I don't, I don't want to make sure that I don't have a bad face. And so he goes to eat it and he really likes it. And yeah, she goes to look at his face and he just goes, let's be honest. Him thinking that she probably wanted some is not too much of a stretch there. <laughs> this is a sweet tooth girl. I mean, it's surprising that she left him with all his buckets. I mean, this is a girl that, shoot, in the earlier, earlier moments of the story, anytime she had a snack, she would give him the trash. <laughs> and then at some point she was giving him bottle caps that had a little bit of juice in it. And then it kind of moved on to her actually giving him some snacks and then giving her him chocolates and a cupcake. And then now, finally, she's giving him chubs of food. So we're, we're seeing that it, it, you, you can see the expression of love that Yamada has for Ichikawa based on how much food she gives him that she doesn't steal for herself. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah the fact that she actually went off to go get her own food was kind of a shocker. So that was that was super cute that... She would do that. And then, yeah, she goes to go get her food. He says, no, that would people give people the wrong idea. And then she says, you looked really cool. Despite the fact that he lost, he looked really cool. So super cute ending to it. But yeah, it has me really curious about where they're going to actually end these next two episodes. But we'll see. That's my thoughts on episode 23 of Danger My Heart. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down below. Comment. 
Let me know what's thought of the episode. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to get my content. I did news reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you like this content and you want to support the channel more, I have Patreon link, tips, links, and thanks for membership button below. Greatly appreciate it, it does. And y'all take care.